So this was inspired by the click going on Netflix, which it isn't anymore. While watching, I couldn't help but think about how the click and Mean Girls fit together. I guess I just wanted to talk about the parallels they have and the greater issue of middle school versus high school. But before we get into that, I guess we have to understand middle school. Movies about middle school are rare, with the inability to drive, a change in interest, hitting puberty, and the focus on growing up. Middle school is a time of adjustment leading to our behavior in high school, which was detailed in an article from Harvard Graduate School of Education. Lynn Michael Brown, a professor at Kobe College, discusses how early adolescence has girls becoming the right kind of girl. A study of shortchanging girls, shortchanging America says how 60% of elementary age girls said they were happy the way they were. 67% of boys said the same thing. By middle school, those numbers had dropped for both genders, but significantly for girls overall to 37% with 56% for boys. In 2018, pollsters from y -Polls and the Confidence Code for Girls found that between the ages of 8 and 14, girls' confidence levels fall by 30%. At the lowest point, at age 14, boys' confidence is still 27% higher than girls. In addition, Brown said, girls were wondering, is it safe to say what I really think? I'm not sure. Better to hedge my bet and play ignorant. It makes sense because when I think about middle school, it made us succumb to norms in society in regards to how girls are supposed to act. The expectation for girls is heightened as we want to be smart, involved, perfect, loved, friendly, and accepted. It can be a lot and sometimes you can sacrifice parts of yourself in order to make yourself likable. Elementary school was the beginning of our social interaction with kids our own age, but middle school is how we're taught to act a specific way. Films like 13 and 8th grade have different themes, but deal with their main characters struggling with who they are and having a complicated relationship with a parent. Coming out within 15 years of one another, it displays how complicated middle school can be. Middle school is mostly represented through books, which has led to being influential to our growth. Middle school influences a lot of literature with books that allow us to escape to another world, like the Percy Jackson series, which received worldwide success and created interest in Greek mythology. The Babysitter's Club has over 100 books, over 30 years old, and has three adaptations that revolve around middle school girls starting a babysitting business in their suburban town. There was a rise of diaries like Diary Whoopi Kid, Dork Diaries, and Dear Dumb Diary, all seeming to point out how middle school can be difficult and the inability to have the same freedom that you would have if you were older. So, it's no surprise that The Click is inspired from a successful book series of its own. The Click was a 14-book series written by Lizzie Harrison that follows girls in 7th and 8th grade living in New York. The first book was published on May 5, 2004. The books document backstabbing and the cattiness of girls at this age, and the film adaptation came out a few years later. Claire arrives in New York from Orlando, Florida, and meets Massey as their parents know each other. Massey doesn't want to associate with her, and Claire really wants to be her friend. Massey's first impression is negative with disliking Claire's outfit. In middle school, how we choose to express ourselves, specifically through clothing, can play a major part in our identity and image. Middle school is a time where we want to figure ourselves out and are beginning to care about being popular. The girls embarrass Claire by getting red paint on her pants, obviously representing her getting her first period in class. And that's vicious because having your period while wearing white pants? A nightmare. Claire is desperate for the girls' approval even though she can't sit with them at lunch and they purposely make her life miserable at this new school. Claire begins to focus on her appearance and she ditches her new friend Lane when she gets an invitation to Massey's sleepover. The sleepover ends up being awful for her because they're teasing her with the iconic, would you rather be a friendless loser or have friends that secretly hate you? I don't know about you, but I would 100% rather be a friendless loser, which Claire did agree with. 
Massey falls for this boy, Chris Abley, after she has like one convo with him and is convinced he's her soulmate. I think that's fairly accurate to middle school romances. One conversation can have you telling all your friends about how much you like him and the fantasy begins. It was a tad embarrassing when she finds out he has a girlfriend and she was obsessing over a boy that wasn't really thinking about her. But that's how it goes sometimes. Claire luckily saves her from embarrassing herself, so Massey definitely owes Claire her dignity for that one. So the distinction between Massey, Kristen, Dylan, and Alicia is rather interesting. Now Alicia is just pretty and rich and maybe the second in command, but there really wasn't one. I don't know, it felt like Massey was the definite leader, but I don't know who her next closest person was. Obviously, Mean Girls is Gretchen, but I think Massey never had a second in command because she wanted to be the sole leader and the one that brought the girls together. This relationship is very similar to the friendship in Pretty Little Liars because in the books they were friends in middle school and had the same unhealthy relationship with an obvious leader and the rest as followers. This leads to the girls drifting apart without Allison, but in this, they were closer together without Massey. Alicia, Dylan, and Kristen were just as nasty as Massey. However, all of them showed signs of compassion. Girls like Massey seem to represent the viciousness that tweens have. Kristen creates a makeup line that's the ambition, naming her lipsticks after her friends. However, Kristen uses peanut oil, which leads to some of the girls having an allergic reaction, and Claire saves the day, courtesy of Massey. It's hard to understand why Massey didn't save the day. Maybe because she likes having the control and being the girl that everyone's scared of. She doesn't want to be someone that's nice or compassionate because that can make her susceptible to being abandoned by her friends. Claire takes matters into her own hands when she gets into Massey's IM and turns her friends against her. Yes, it wasn't smart because they were able to put it together, but she was desperate for approval and friends, and when they accepted her, she was happy. Claire became just as catty as Massey, and when they turned on her, she's upset. It's hard not to sympathize with her because she just wanted to be accepted. She apologizes to Lane and gains the other girl's respect, pointing out how they don't seem to like Massey either. Now, this movie is largely about the relationship between Claire and Massey, with Massey making Claire's life miserable since she came there. Obviously, Claire living with Massey made her have more reason to dislike her, admitting she saw her as a threat. Girls can display cattiness that's not seen with boys, specifically in middle school. Her self-esteem is affected by not having friends her age, and the click kind of ended on an optimistic note of everyone being friends. Wait. So what does this have to say about high school? Oh, you can tell me. Hold on. Oh my god, she's so annoying. Who is? High school is the topic of every teen movie with having the popular jock, the shy protagonist, the funny best friend, and the need to fit in with being teased by the popular girl. Or something like this. Specifically in the 2000s, they can be rather cheesy with having similar tropes, but they can easily become classics with a Cinderella story, Aquamarine, She's the Man, Bring It On, John Tucker Must Die, and so many more, influencing a generation. The 2010s has brought a different era of high school with emphasizing how social media has played a role, distinguishing between how having our life online and being connected affects how we spend our time, our friends, and everything in between. TV shows have focused on how we've matured because of it and displayed vulnerable topics on screen like Euphoria, 13 Reasons Why, and Elite. Having gone to high school at the end of the 2010s, Mean Girls has this charm that makes it feel timeless. Mean Girls is inspired by the book Queen Bees and Wannabes by Rosalind Wiseman, which came out in 2002. The book isn't necessarily a narrative, as Tina Fey understood the concepts in the book and created a story based on the topics at hand. In Rosalind's interview with The Atlantic, she talked about one of the things Mean Girls got right about the portrayal, which was the topic of sexuality, saying, The second thing it got right is the play of sexuality and how girls are constantly sort of struggling with their sexuality. I certainly want young girls to come into their sexuality in positive ways. There is nothing pathological or horrible about that. What's pathological and horrible about it is how we shame or codify young people's sexuality. 
So what I thought the movie got right was the interplay of how girls are processing that and how they're being co-opted by it, fight against it, talk about it, get jealous of each other about it, compare each other. Katie was entering a new environment by coming to a new school from another country and didn't understand the dynamics of friendships among girls, almost like she was realizing how girls were and learning the lessons that some of us learn when we're younger. Katie takes revenge when realizing how rude Regina was by taking away what matters most to her, her body, her boyfriend, and her friends. In an attempt to take revenge on all the bad things that Regina had done to others, she was becoming just as manipulative. Katie dating Aaron was this big moment because she was able to get the guy that she had a crush on since she walked into math class. Aaron was this prize to be won as Katie broke them up as it was exposed that Regina was cheating on him. Regina only wanted Aaron after discovering Katie has a crush on him, which is similar to Claire ruffling Chris's hair to upset Massey. Boys are a common topic, specifically in high school television shows and movies, because we grow up wanting to have our Nathan and Haley, or Sebastian and Carrie, or Elena and Stefan. I don't know if this makes sense, but boys are a huge part of the high school experience in terms of what we see in literature and movies. Regina is compared to Caesar by Gretchen as she seems to be ruthless and can ruin someone's life. Additionally, Regina is admired as the other students want her approval. Eventually, the toxic system is dismantled. Not really, but the plastics are no more, and Regina becomes an athlete and Gretchen and Karen find their own friends. Realistically, are we friends with all the same people we were friends with going from middle school to high school? Sometimes, yes. But other times, no. It's completely normal to drift apart from people, and yeah, maybe sometimes it can have this dramatic falling out, but sometimes you just aren't the same person. In the clique, they were friends because of the benefits it gave, not necessarily because they liked one another. Modern Girls did a spectacular video talking about the fashion in Mean Girls, specifically how the clothing transformation plays a big part in Katie's character. However, a commonality in both is how a clothing transformation was necessary to fit in, which in the click, the girls are able to afford designer while Claire can't. If Claire would have been able to afford designer, would she have been able to fit in with the girls? Specifically because it was obvious with the girls naming designers such as Michael Kors and Ralph Lauren. I don't necessarily think that middle school was revolving around big brands such as those, but I do remember other brands rising to fame like Miss Me Jeans, Tom's, Uggs, and Aeropostale. There's obvious scenes we can't forget, such as in Mean Girls, the slow walking scene in the hallway, which added a bit of comedic relief as Katie falls into the trash can. But this scene was also in the click with Massey losing an earring and is forced to retrace her steps. The Christmas performance is not only great for the memes and eventually a cultural reset, but it kind of made Katie a permanent member of the group if she wasn't already. Because it was Katie's idea to improvise the song. If she was able to lead the audience into singing Jingle Bells, then what was next? How far would she go with the power that she has? A major concept in this movie is how girls seek revenge and retaliate against those that disrespect them. In Mean Girls, Regina seeks revenge on Katie for making her gain weight and releases the burn book to the school, leading to chaos. The scene with everyone apologizing was kind of a big deal because it was public and vulnerable. In Mean Girls, we see how vicious the revenge was and how it was destructive to the friendships in the movie. It ends on this optimistic note of no more clicks, which I don't necessarily believe. Mean Girls was able to show how easy it is to do vicious things when you want approval, and Katie slash Claire had to learn the hard way that it wasn't worth it. Looking back, I don't really know what this video is, I guess just discussing the cattiness of girls through the ages, specifically just some points from both movies. One of my favorite book series in middle school was Annabelle Unleashed. The first book was titled Boys Are Dogs, which I gather that boys can be kind of dumb and need to be treated as such. And the second book was titled Girls Acting Catty, which revolved around them being conniving and pretty intelligent, and it's a matter of outsmarting them. I guess these movies play off how girls are vicious and we approach conflicts differently because of the social norms. 
These movies capture two distinct times of our adolescence and I've always related to The Click because I watched it in middle school and thought, hey, I relate to this. But hopefully in the future we see more movies about middle school and college. Oh my gosh, we need more television shows about college.